So, um, here with Alex Schaub, is that right? Yeah. Correct. Uh, and um, you're working on field fabricating processes. So, or what, what exactly are you doing? Well, we are trying to develop a, a low-cost prosthetic uh, limb where only on the knee prosthetics because uh, a both knee is getting too complicated for the moment for us. But uh, we, uh, there is a lot of demand for it in developing countries. So we want to develop a, a good, low-cost yet high-quality prosthetic for developing countries using local material as much as possible mm -hmm. and uh, of course the the speed how to produce it that's one of the most uh, crucial ways so my goal is to uh, produce two legs a day mm -hmm. so that people can walk in at 10 o'clock in the morning got a life cost in their leg and five six o'clock in the evening they're walking out they'll be literally walking yeah that's great uh, so yeah, well, I hope we can get there. <laughs> so what what contributes to this demand? What, uh, I mean, is it landmines or diabetes or what? I mean, are these the main? It's both. I mean, it depends on the country, I think, and uh, uh, and well, but for us, it was a, it started out as a business case in, for a fab lab in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and there there are a lot of accidents, uh, car and bike accidents, but also diabetes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so on. Actually, landmines not that much there. Okay. But there is. I heard there is there this uh, huge list that people sometimes wait for three weeks until they can get uh, uh, three weeks, three years. I'm sorry. Three years. Three yeah. years to to uh, get a new uh, leg. And you can imagine, within these three years, they get totally alienated, and it becomes a psychological project uh, problem. And uh, that's very sad. Yeah. And. It's not that they don't have uh, the technology there uh, to do so, mm -hmm. but it's more it's more that uh, uh, in the whole prosthetics world it's very centralized, it's monopolized by these two big companies, Autobock yeah. and Osu. Yeah. And I think you don't really solve problems when you send all the Western stuff no. to developing countries. So what I'm up to is find how can we do this there with the local and actually create uh, create work for them as well because work is very cheap yep. in, in developing countries so I thought uh, we need a few people that for instance make just day in and day out just life costs mm -hmm. so after a few weeks they, they, are, they will be already specialists so they can make it very good and then from this life cost we can go on make a very good stomp uh, uh, adapter and then we want to use bamboo and uh, for the metal I will find out this summer I will go there and give a workshop on uh, uh, metal working. Well, have you considered uh, extracting aluminum from uh, aluminum silicates or uh, clay that kind of thing? Or Not yet. No, but that's maybe a completely different project I suppose. It could be you know but it's I have to say uh, I'm not at all a specialist in prosthetics. I just was growing into this since uh, last May mm -hmm. and it's it's very difficult uh, subject is very complicated as well yep. and it has these things by law that it has to fulfill a certain aspects and so on yeah. so it all needs to be uh, tested those laws definitely exist yet here, it has to look sexy as well it's, oh, very, yeah. it's more important than I thought actually they're not happy with this kind of robot arm leg no. so you need to make uh, you need to make covers that looks like a real leg mm -hmm. and then you're on the business yeah okay so yeah um, I really don't know what else to ask I know nothing about prosthetics so yeah it's um, but uh, so what's the fab lab angle on this because I mean you're working with fab labs and uh, yeah I was well initially we were always thinking like what what how can we improve uh, the making of low-cost prosthetics by using the means of a fab lab? And uh, I'm not entirely sure yet how we can use it because what I used until now is a lathe. Mm -hmm. That's very important for prosthetics. You need a lathe and you need a proper milling machine. Yeah. Probably a shop bot could do, mm -hmm. but still, metal, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but what we are trying to do and where the Fab Lab comes in is like prosthetic help tools mm -hmm. like alignment, Lazar, laser systems. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you were oh. experimenting with the 3D scanner the other day. Exactly, that's, that's the other thing and we are really going for it because I mean it could be interesting if you could scan, make a field scanner that you could go to the amputees' homes, yeah. because it's always already the first problem. They cannot come to you; you have to go to them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you have to have like this portable 3D scanner that could make a very good scan, mm -hmm. send the scan to orthopedic specialists, uh, which they don't have that much in developing countries. Mm -hmm. But I think there the internet comes in perfectly. You could send oh. that scan. Yeah, th this is actually similar. Um, we. Uh, in, in Afghanistan, we set up this system uh, where you, uh, there was this machine that sliced uh, samples. Um, this was for a, I, I can never remember the word, it's um, uh, you know, where they take uh, samples of things that are growing on your body that you don't want to be growing oh, on. Like RMI uh, kind of and, 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 Yeah, they slice them down. They stick them under a uh, microscope and they press a button on a digital camera that's attached to it and this sends the scans over to San Diego and an hour or two later they get um, get the results back. So an you're, you're basically, yeah, an analysis from the doctors because the doctors are available elsewhere. They don't have to be on site, right? Yeah, so you're talking I mean. about doing exactly the same thing for orthopedics. Exactly, because that that could help because you know, it's like sad but it, there is seriously knowledge lacking there as well that's why I feel like this year I need to go there and I want to teach them because they have good machines they have a huge lathe they have a, a very good uh, uh, milling machine mm -hmm. but they don't really use it yeah so I want to try to teach them I re-engineer this one very spe very uh, important connection tool which you need both in order to align the prosthetic mm -hmm. to your body. Yeah. And that costs 165 euros a piece here. Yeah. I can imagine if I want that the whole uh, leg is costing 50 dollars. That's no way. No. So I don't want to ship them from America or wherever. So I want to go there, take the cheapest metal they have. Yeah and chrome it like uh, this Harley Davidson shops where they crawl all their motorcycles and we chrome our yeah. <laughs> adapters, you know. And I think then uh, uh, it's possible to make one for $10. And maybe if they do good, they can uh, uh, serve whole Indonesia for it. And yeah. then I will be a very happy man. <laughs> all right, good luck. Thanks.